I'm here at CES 2026. And sure, there's plenty to see here, like new robot and AI technology and huge micro LED TVs that I'll never be able to afford. But I'm here for just one thing, to see all the new products coming out that are related to 3D printing. Let's take a look. They just opened the doors. I'm on my way to my first stop, the Creality booth. At the booth, they were showing two 3D printers. One was their flagship K2, and the other is a brand new printer that will start shipping out in February. The Spark X i7 is Creality's new entry-level printer that's geared towards beginners. It has a 260 by 260 by 255 millimeter build volume, four color printing with the CFS light, and AI error detection. It looks like they have early bird pricing for 339 if you get it before January 20th. That's a great price to get started with four color printing. Next, I got a demo of the 3D scanners and even got a full 3D scan of myself. Reality uh, has really disrupted the 3D scanner market by bringing a ton of really great consumer and prosumer grade scanners. Uh, this specifically is the Ceremoon S1, and it is a blue line laser scanner. So, very easy. I just press play, and I'll just press play one more time, and we can begin scanning. Yeah, let me know. As you can see, just about in 10 yeah, seconds, we yeah. have so, yeah, let me know. completed the scan. And I might pass it over you like this at one point. So just make sure, you know, yeah. uh, don't move. The scanner may be a bit pricey for the average consumer at $2,700, but Creality also offers many other 3D scanners, starting with the Ferret, which is now on sale for $229. Creality was also showing their new Falcon T1 laser engraver. It's the first 5-in-1 laser engraver that allows for a wide range of materials, including wood, plastics, metals, as well as transparent materials like glass and acrylic. It's not yet available for purchase, but I'll provide an update in the video description once there are more details. This next product's really interesting for designing 3D models. It's a 3D haptic mouse from Happily. I can interact in 3D with this model okay. using this, and it has a touch sensitivity to it. I actually can feel that sphere as I touch the surface here. When I press the button, I can press down, or I can use it as a look as well. I have to say I was really impressed with this device. It was easy to use, and it really does give you a hands-on feel. It was a little awkward being left-handed since there were only setups at the show to use it right-handed. You can grab onto the model and feel when you push or pull onto it to sculpt it. And when you carve into the model, it does feel like you're carving into a physical object. They had a Kickstarter campaign last year, and it looks like those first products will be shipping soon. Another awesome product I saw was the HD1 laser from Ace Laser. I thought it could be a great way to add to 3D printing. These were done in like a black, it's a black PLA, right? Okay. That this was ran all at once. It's not just like one beam and it goes and it moves down. It moves up and down and curves. It starts at $3,800, so it is a bit pricey for the average consumer, but it could be a great fit for maybe a small Etsy business. There were also a couple metal 3D printers I got to see. The first are by Masterx, and they use a process called laser powder bed fusion, which uses the laser to melt and fuse the metal powder. It's still well out of my price range, but they lowered the entry cost from over $100,000 down to $39,000. It'll still be a while before metal flexi dragons are flooding the market. And the second's from metal printing. Their Gauz MT90 prints a metal paste, which is then later heated and fused in a second process. It was pretty awesome to see the printer in action and be able to see and feel the final metal 3D printed products. Another printer I saw was Atomform's Palette 300 printer. This printer has 12 auto swapping nozzles. They can print up to 36 colors. And the company claims their auto swapping system has 50% faster swaps and 90% less waste. Unfortunately, they did not have the printer running at the show, so I did not get to see it in action. But it will be interesting to see it once their Kickstarter is live. There were a couple of filament companies I talked to as well, and I'm excited to show you some of their products in some upcoming videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see some of my other videos for 3D printing tips and tricks, as well as some fun 3D builds. Thank you for watching.